Good afternoon, everyone. This is Katie Novotny calling in from Premier Marketing. First and foremost, as always, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us. Today, we are actually going to talk about some alternative ways of funding long-term care. A lot of us that have been in the industry a long time remember the 10 pays and the alternative flexible premium payments. And we are thrilled that we have carriers now bringing these ideas back. Today, we have Lawrence Avenzio of National Guardian Life here to talk about their products and alternative ways that they are flexing premiums and providing great coverage through the long-term care industry. So with that, Lawrence, you ready to take it away? Absolutely, Katie. If you could push that magic button that lets me share my screen, I've got a few visuals to go along with what we'll be chatting about today. Um, and while you're doing that, everyone on the line, thank you all very much for uh, taking the time here to learn a little bit more about what NGL has to offer with our essential LTC product. Um, bear with me just a second. There it goes. It's starting to work now. So if you joined us last time uh, where we discussed some of the key features of the product, you'll see we addressed those first three bullets. We talked about our joint policy. We talked about our third benefit pool via the shared benefit amount rider. We talked about our two, three, four, five, six year or lifetime unlimited benefit periods. Today, we're going to talk about the fourth bullet down, our single 10 year and lifetime premium payment options. And we're also going to discuss a way you can use our single pay with a 1035 exchange. Uh, I believe in our next session, we'll talk a little bit about that last bullet, uh, where you can structure this traditional product to look, feel, and act like those life-based hybrid or linked benefit type products. So please also join us next time where we discuss that. Um, additionally, if you have any questions, please type them in the question or chat box on your GoToWebinar control panel, and uh, we'll address those towards the end. Or Katie, if one is extremely topical, feel free to jump in and, and um, uh, have uh, interject the question into the conversation. Um, so to begin, as I said with that fourth bullet, uh, we have ways now where you can sell, and I'm going to say this out loud, guaranteed premium traditional long-term care insurance. To talk about that first item before the first slash, our single premium payment option, the single pay. If you review the specimen contract for our single pay, you will see that it is no longer guaranteed renewable. It is non-cancelable because it is fully paid up on day one. We will never ask for another penny of premium and it will never be subject to a rate increase because it's already fully paid up and non-camp. Fully guaranteed single pays. I have that available. Everywhere the product's available, with the exception of New Jersey and Florida. Those two states have not approved it. To talk about the item in the middle, the 10-year pay. And Katie talked about, you know, things of yesteryear. Well, the 10 pays, at least the huge majority of them, I believe there's one at one time. The 10 pays of yesteryear were not fully guaranteed. They were subject to potential rate increases during that 10-year period of time. Well, in 43 states, you can still sell our 10-year pay as a fully guaranteed standalone traditional long-term care insurance policy. It is fully guaranteed from day one. It will never be subject to a rate increase. The premium cannot ever go up. Now, I said 43 states. I should have said jurisdictions because there's 42 plus D.C. Um, or excuse me, there are 43 states. Now, I have a remaining five jurisdictions. I'm mixing them up, of course. Five jurisdictions, because one of them is D.C., where we do have a 10-year pay available, but it is not yet fully guaranteed. I expect four of those five to be fully guaranteed in the near future. And the only state that currently, where the product is available, that currently does not have a 10-year pay is Florida. And we do expect to have a fully guaranteed 10-year pay in Florida by the end of the year. Okay. So in a huge majority of jurisdictions, you can sell a fully guaranteed 10-year pay as of today. And I have four more jurisdictions and Florida that will likely have that guaranteed 10-year pay by the year, end of the year. Potentially by the end or middle of the third quarter. It just depends on timing. Now, 
We do, of course, just like the other traditional policies out there, have a lifetime premium payment option, which is how most long-term care insurance is sold, mainly, I feel, for affordability reasons. We have that available. But we also have a great story to tell behind it. NGL jumped into long-term care insurance very intentionally in, the, in a very timely way. After we learned a lot as an industry, this product hit the market in 2016. What else happened by 2016? We learned a whole lot about claims data. We didn't have great claim studies until 2010 or so, which if you know much about the history of long-term care insurance was about the exact same time carriers started having their first rate increases. We don't have any of that legacy business. We jumped into this market after the pricing and utilization and last ratio and underwriting mistakes were made in the products of yesteryear. So we're coming into this very fresh base with 30 years of industry experience via our back office administrator, as well as all the industry data available. So is our lifetime pay guaranteed? No, absolutely not. You could have a rate increase. But I think when you look at the fact that we are in this business with very fresh data, great pricing, great underwriting standards. We didn't make the mistakes of underpriced, poorly underwritten business. I think it has a lot to say about our lifetime premium payment option. But if the client's still concerned, I've heard a lot about rate increases in the news and these carriers are doing lots of, well, I have a way to sell you guaranteed premium on this policy in two different ways in most states. Let's discuss your options. I can completely remove those concerns or, in very few states, mitigate those concerns to only a 10-year exposure. So great options to be discussing. Now, another really interesting idea that goes along with these options is a 1035 exchange. And for those of you that didn't attend the first uh, kind of soundbite session we're doing here, this will not be a long session. I may talk for another six minutes and then do Q&A, okay? So over these next five, six minutes, I'm going to tell you what a 1035 exchange is, how we're able to do it, and then I'm gonna tell you how I saw a lot of advisors very successfully sell this concept, which is really the process I implemented myself after I saw them doing it. So let's talk about 1035 exchange. So the Pension Protection Act, which, by the way, didn't go into effect until 2010, is what allows us to do this in the way that we can. And many people don't know all the details of this, and the reason why is a historical thing, right? I just said the PPA didn't go into effect until 2010. Well, by 2010, there's only one carrier still doing single premium long-term care insurance, and they didn't administer the 1035 exchanges and they stopped doing their single pays later that year anyway. So that's why you might not have heard so much about this, just because there hasn't been single pay long-term care around. So what the PPA allowed us to do is expand what we were capable of via Section 1035 of the Internal Revenue Code, and now we can take surrender values from non-qualified tax-deferred annuities or from cash value life insurance, and we can take both what they put in it, the principal or basis, as well as the stuff they haven't paid tax on yet, the gains. And you can take all of it, pay for long-term care insurance premium, and the benefits that come out the other end of the policy are tax-free long-term care reimbursements. So what I love about this concept is as an advanced planner or advisor or long-term care specialist or whatever you happen to do, you can basically wave your magic wand and turn what was a potentially taxable asset into tax-free long-term care benefits. Keep in mind, they never paid tax on the gains in the original policy. I find this to be a really interesting story to tell, and I love when you were able to tell it. So, a couple quick things to look out for. Keep in mind, I can't use Section 1035 with qualified money. That's the first bubble there on the screen. So this has to be a non-qualified annuity or cash value life insurance. To skip to the bottom bubble real quick, keep in mind if you do this with a single premium payment option, you're selling guaranteed premium long-term care insurance. They will never get a rate increase and they never pay tax on the gains in the original policy. I can't think of a better story to tell. 
when it comes to long-term care planning, that is. <laughs> now, the middle bubble, if you run into a couple, you might have a couple of hiccups. Call us. Katie and I can feed you a couple of strategy ideas where we can still make things work. The hiccups that I mean is, let's say you run into a husband-wife couple. The husband has a life insurance policy in his name. Well, if you attended our first session, you know we have a joint long-term care insurance policy. I can't take the husband's life insurance, single insured, and stick that into joint long-term care because I have to have what's considered a like-for-like -like exchange. So same owners and insureds on the existing policy as on the new long-term care policy. So I can't go from single to joint. But I'll give you this example that came up about a year and a half ago for me. Um, I had a couple. The husband had the life insurance. It was worth about 150 grand. So I explained to the advisor, hey, I can't play with this on Section 1035, but I have an idea for you. Get me a little more information. Here's what I need. Get me the cost basis of the policy and get me what the current cash value is. Well, when he came back to me, as I said, it was worth 150 grand. The cost basis was about 147,000 and change. It was an underperforming UL, so no wonder they wanted to get rid of it, right? So what I advised them to do is said, hey, just cash it out. Take the 150 grand. There's only 2,500-ish in gains in there. So all they're going to be taxed on is on 2,500 bucks. So they did. And then they used the 150,000 to buy regular old single premium long-term care insurance with cash. When those scenarios come up, the only other advice I give the advisor is, hey, make sure they don't um, come down with, forget this, I'm buying a boat syndrome. I've seen that happen too. But it's a great way to use the cash value outside of Section 1035 when you've identified that assets available. Now with annuities, um, on countless occasions, we've had one spouse who has the annuity, but then they call up their annuity carrier who say, and, and they say, hey, can I have my spouse as a joint annuitant? They say, of course, no problem. Maybe it's a piece of paper. Then after that, I have joint annuitants. I can go into joint long-term care. So we've got some great ways to work around some of these things. Just keep in mind, with couples, we have to have like-for-like -like transfers. Okay. So that's the what. I want to show you the how for the next few minutes. So at this point, you financially and medically pre-qualified your client. You have information on their assets, their income, their health, history, etc. And when you're looking at their assets and income, you can see that there's something that they bought that they might not need for the same reason they used to. And then here's what you do. Look, Mr. Client. I can help you in one of two ways. I can help you transfer the risk of possibly needing care to an insurance company, and you pay them a fee every year to do it called a premium. Or I can help you do exactly what you told me you want to do, which is self-insure. But what if I told you I could help you do it better and longer than you're doing it on your own? Would you mind if we discuss both of these options? Now. What I said seemed very simple, but this is months of observation and finessing this conversation. Here's what I mean by that. When I started listening to people do this, I said, oh, that sounds really easy. How come they keep getting a yes from the client? The client always says yes, they want to discuss the options. Why? Well, basically what that advisor said was, hey, Mr. Client, I can get you a traditional policy or a hybrid. Do you want to talk about them? But a second ago, I didn't use either one of those words in quotation marks in the middle of your screen. I said, Mr. Client, I can help you, key point number one, health is sales psychology, use that word. I can help you in one of two ways. Point number two, you're providing options. People are more likely to say yes when they're not cornered and they have choices. Then I said I can help you to transfer the risk of possibly needing care, your CLTC mantra. You're not going to need care, but if you did, the consequences could be devastating, right? and you pay an annual premium for it. Or I can help you do exactly what you want to do. Point number three, you're helping them achieve their goals. Exactly what you want to do, but I can help you do it better and longer than you're doing it on your own. Point number four, now you've piqued a lot of interest. So after those four very fine little bits of sales psychology built into this pitch, when you ask, would you mind if we discuss both of these options, 
rarely did I ever hear the client say no to me or to the advisors I used to shadow doing this. So that's how you tee it up. Where do you go from here? Well, Mr. Client, here's a very simple picture of your portfolio. You told me you want to self-insure. Generally, people do that with a life insurance policy or an annuity that they bought many moons ago for reasons that are not as important today. For example, let's use your life insurance policy, right? You bought that because the kids weren't through college yet, because you were still actively at work and you were going to be for another 30 years. It was income replacement, right? Should you pass away, you wanted to leave this legacy so your family could continue achieving the goals that they've already achieved. Well, now you're retired, and so is, is, is Mrs. And Mrs. Client. And the kids are all through school. Student loans are paid. No car notes. The house is paid off. So you don't have this life insurance policy for the same reason you used to. And you told me you were going to self-insure, so the only reason you have it now is in case you need care. But what did I promise you I could do? I promised you I can help you self-insure better and longer than you do it on your own. So if I take that little life insurance sliver of the pie and I pack it into this vehicle called a 1035 exchange, I can achieve that goal. Look at how much larger that slice of your pie becomes. And that whole slice could be tax-free long-term care reimbursements. If you're concerned you might die and never need care, I can give, give that regular slice in that dark blue right back to the pie, same size it used to be. And that money will go to your beneficiaries when you die. And if you even think you might consider canceling this thing, I can put a surrender value on it. That'll grade up to 80% of the premiums by the fourth anniversary. Now, I love the picture that the marketing folks put on this slide because you see the, the husband looking at the wife and he's a bit bewildered and, and she's looking at the advisor also a bit bewildered because the, the, the responses I would see Active live in the field. People would say things like, how come nobody showed this to me before? Is this even legal? How do you build something like this? Well, folks, if you attended our first session about a month or two ago, you know you can build a long-term care insurance contract with either lifetime unlimited benefits or a two, three, four, five, or six-year benefit period. And you can add a third benefit pool to it via the shared benefit amount rider. If the client dies and doesn't need care, on our next session, we're going to talk about some really interesting return of premium options to make this look, feel, and act like a hybrid type of policy all on a traditional chassis. Or if they even think they might consider canceling this thing, we can add a surrender value to it. So, folks, I think I've been talking for about 15-plus minutes here. This is where I end where I began. You have a traditional policy here that can be what you want it to be, or more importantly, it can be what your client says they need it to be because you have the flexibility to flex and mold this thing into what's important to them. If they're concerned about the potential for a future rate increase, you have ways to guarantee the premium. If they're concerned they might die and never need care, you have ways to make this look, act, and feel like an asset-based policy and add a return of premium rider, which is a benefit of death if care is never needed. And we do it all on a price competitive product called Essential LTC. So with that, that is our 15-minute soundbite on single premium, 10-year premium, and 1035 exchange. Um, Katie, if we have any questions in there, I'd be happy to answer them. And everyone who's on the line, I truly appreciate you taking a little bit time out of your day and learning more about our product. And if there's anything we can do to earn your business, it is absolutely our pleasure. So please don't be shy to reach out. So a couple questions. One is, what are the issue ages of your policy? Uh, we issue by an age nearest basis, and it's from age nearest 40 to age nearest 79. The next question is, what are those four jurisdictions you're talking about? Where the 10 pay is so not guess, guaranteed? Yes. Well, there's five where it's currently not guaranteed. They are, off the top of my head, Arizona, California, Connecticut, Indiana, uh, and DC. I expect all, I expect four of those five, California is the exception, to have a fully guaranteed 10 year pay by the end of the year. 
So for Connecticut, Arizona, D.C., and Indiana, they do have a 10K right now, but it is not fully guaranteed. It will be by the end of the year. California does have a 10-year pay, not fully guaranteed, could have an increase during the 10 years. I do not expect them to give us our guaranteed 10 pay. Perfect. The Another question typed in, do you have an e-app? Yes, we do. Uh, it's hosted on our agent website at ngl-essentialltc.com. Uh, you can self-register for access there, and once you're in the website, the e-app is available. Well, I think you handled it all. I appreciate it very much, Lawrence, and everyone that attended today. We look forward to any kind of questions that you may have in the future, and if there's any chance that you have somebody that you want to talk about, maybe a potential case or maybe even yourself, you want to look and see what rates would be, please feel free to give us a call here at Premier, and if there's something I can't answer, I am more than positive that Lawrence would get on the call with us to answer any questions you may have. So with that, I want to thank everybody for attending, and I look forward to hearing from each and every one of you. Thanks again, Lawrence, for your help. Hey, my pleasure, Katie. Thank you for uh, hosting the session, and thank you, everyone, for taking the time. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye.